Good morning, y'all. It's Vanessa with Farm Girl Gardens and Market, and I just wanted to do a quick bee update today. Um, I have started the process of becoming a beekeeper. It's been a lifelong dream of mine. A few weeks back, I set up our site to keep bees, and then rapid fire a few days after that um, I was actually able to assist in the capture of a couple of wild um, swarms and rescue of some colonies that had set up in some people's homes so I wanted to kind of show you the bee yard we now have three very happy and active hives and just wanted to kind of share that with you and also a couple of um, bee tips and facts um, along the way so Let's go take a look at our bees. One of the things that you'll want to keep in mind when you're setting up your bee yard is that you want the bees to be placed somewhere where they're not going to create a nuisance to you, to the management of your property, or to your neighbors. Another aspect that you want to um, consider is where you are facing the hive. And for us, we are facing this hive in the south direction. That is also to kind of help those bees stay cool, um, you know, throughout the seasons. And um, Let's go ahead and get in, in it. Now you're gonna see me kind of walk behind and around because bees will make a beeline into their hive. And so since we are facing the Southern exposure, I'm coming from behind. Um, let me flip this camera around. Nope, there we go. <laughs> okay, so this is the first hive that we installed. And as you can see, these guys have been super busy. They are, um, you know, out pollinating. We've stopped feeding them. It's not necessary at this point. And these are good bees. I'm not suited up and they're not bothering me at all. Another hive setup that we have are these two boxes here. And you'll see that the bees are just, you know, coming in um, and collecting pollen, which they use to make their honey. But they're also really helping at this point in the year in Texas to keep this hive cool. One of the interesting facts about bees if you didn't know, is that bees will actually beat their wings about 14,000 times per minute. And it's that method of flapping their wings that is creating that buzzing sound. But the purpose for that, apologize for the lighting, it's just hot out here, I'm trying to get in the shade. The purpose for that is that they are cooling and maintaining the temperature of their hive. They pretty consistently keep it at around 97 degrees, which is amazing in Texas. It's barely nine in the morning and it's already 90. Um, sorry. Um, but so that is something that I just really wanted to encourage you guys to consider, especially if you have bees that, you know, have made their home in an area of your property that is a nuisance to you, rather than spraying and killing those bees, the most effective thing that you can do is to reach out to a local beekeeper to help recover those bees because those bees are managing that hive and that honey. You know, when you're out in the wild, you never see honey just pouring out of beehives. The reason for that is those bees are keeping that honey temperature, um, temperature controlled. If you were to eradicate bees in a home setting by killing them, what's going to happen is, yeah, you'll remove the bees and then pretty instantaneously, you'll have thousands of dollars in home repair because that honey is going to melt, pour over all of the drywall, attract other nuisance critters like rodents and insects, potentially even termites once you start to get um, you know, wood damage from all of that liquid. So those are things that can really affect the resale value of your home, especially if termites are involved, you're gonna have to report that and disclose that in the seller's disclosure. So I've seen a lot of homeowners recently really struggling with how do they safely and kindly remove these bees. And I'm gonna tell you the most effective, um, the most affordable and the most kind way to do that is to reach out to your local beekeepers um, group. You can put, or even reach out to your local ag extension. They will happily put you in, in in contact with the beekeeper who is actively scaling up their bee operation. Um, you know, just in a matter of, I think, two weeks, we were able to capture and rehome these two or these three hives that I have now. Um, so I just wanted to encourage you to consider that if you're dealing with any type of nuisance bee situation. Another thing I wanted to just share quickly is I actually had to change out one of my waterers in the hen coop. Um, and bees always need access to fresh water. In our property, we actually have an abundance of water. We've got several ponds um, throughout the area, but I wanted to share this tip with you, and that's if you have an old chicken water, you can go ahead and fill it and then put um, a bunch of rocks or even marbles at the base of it so that the bees can access the water without drowning. 
put that in a shady spot near the bees and they will find it. And so if you aren't a beekeeper, but maybe your neighbor is and you're struggling with having a lot of bees in your pool this time of year, it may be worth it to you to go ahead and get um, a supplemental watering system that you can put off site to redirect the bees there. They're gonna prefer fresh water over your chlorine. So if you make the water available for them, they'll find it. I hope that that helps. I hope that you are safely um, gardening and maintaining your homestead in this Texas heat. And if you ever run into an issue with needing to recover or rehome bees, please reach out to me. I will put you in touch with the local beekeepers in your area if I can, and if it's in my area, I'd be happy to help assist you in kindly recovering those bees. So I hope that that helps. I hope you're well, and until next time, bye y'all.